Hello everyone, welcome to Marlin Chess Kids. Today I show the gameplay by Ying Ri and his Mayo and this beautiful game complete in just 30 moves. And let's see how the game play. The game start with the pawn to d4 and f6 c4 g6 and the knight develop to c3 then bishop to g7 and here the black have the chance to go for short casting in just three more then the white continue to play e4 after this d6 was played and now the uh, white continue to play h3 and after this move the black just go for a short castling and here you can see this is the first five move and the position is equal and here you have the king indian indians openings and the game continue with the bishop to g5 attacking the knight and after this the black push the pawn to c5 trying to break off the pawn in the center after this d5 was played trying to pressure the center and push the pawn forwards with this the pawn at e6 trying to attack the pawn again and break off the center of the pawn after this move bishop to d3 was played and now the pawn capture the d5 pawn then the pawn capture back again and after this the knight b to d7 continue to develop the knight and also you have okay you can play the knight can continue to go to e5 and towards the center of the square then knight to f3 was played and now the rook check rook to e8 check the king and here you have the first 10 move and still the position is equal for both sides so after this move the white can actually play a bishop to e3 or bishop to e2 to prevent the check however in this actual game the white just move away the king to f1 a very nice move and without the idea to castling this game after this move the knight goes to e5 continue to gain control of the center and trying to attack the pieces such as the bishop or the knight and can go for the exchange so after this move the knight just capture the knight and now the rook capture it back and at this position still equal for both sides then queen to e2 was played and with this move you can bring the rook to e1 and capture the rook go for the exchange as well then the queen goes to f8 was played and after this move now the white play g4 try to gain control on the king side and after this move to e8 bring back the rook to the 8th rank and then now the king to b2 and here you have the two rook able to go to the E1 square and also go for the action and controlling the E file. After this, A6 was played and then the rook A to E1. After this, the pawn H6 trying to attack the bishop away. 
alternative at this position the black can just capture the loop and after the loop capture then you can just move the pawn to attack the bishop so in this game a pawn attack the bishop first and with this the bishop capture the knight then the bishop capture the back and after this move the rook capture then the queen capture and now at this position the queen can capture the pawn that is unguarded by the black so in this move the uh, white just continue to play a knight continue to develop attack the bishop as well as attack the pawn at d6 and in this position the white is slightly better then the queen just goes to d8 to protect both of the pawn and the bishop and now the queen just capture the pawn at h6 and winning a pawn Another suggestion that the white can play is that you just capture the bishop and after the queen capture, then you can just capture the pawn and it also give white a better position. So after this move, the queen capture the pawn at h6 and after this, the bishop just capture the pawn at b2. And then this is the first 20 move and now the knight is active and you can bring the knight continue to g5 and you have the queen check the king and a simple capture the pawn at f7 and it will be a check made. So knight to g5 was played and if the queen go to h7 check then the king move to f8 then the queen will continue to capture the pawn f7 and would win the game this is you have the white attack with force so after this move the best solution is to move the queen to f6 and this will prevent the queen to capture the pawn at F7. So in this game, the black made a tactical mistake by moving the bishop to g7. And you see this is a red color. By moving bishop to g7, now the white has many nice attacking ideas. So the first attacking idea would be queen to h7 check the king and this you only leave the king to f8 continue to run away after this move the one of the nice move at this portion to play you can play a very nice sacrifice i give a couple of seconds to figure how the white can continue to play a nice move at this position. Well, congratulations for those who found the answer. And for those who like to enjoy the show, here are the possible moves. A very nice move that the white can play is to make a knight sacrifice. Knight take the ball at F7. And this sacrifice, you cannot capture the knight. If you capture the knight, then the bishop will just capture the pawn at d6 and continue to check the king. And now the king only have these three moves to move. And if you move the king to f8, then the white will continue to play rook to b1 with the idea to continue 
to e3 then continue to f3 and check and win the game and in this version the white will be clearly winning even though the white is losing a knight in this position so after bishop to d7 then the rook can go to d3 and this is a very nice idea to win the game in this position so any move such as queen to f6 and rook f3 will be winning the queen and if you do not block with the queen such as if you try to block with the bishop then you can the white can just win the game by queen to f7 check right? so back to this position After the knight captures the pawn, and assuming that if the bet do not capture the knight, let's say if you move the queen to e7, then the bishop will just capture the pawn. And in this position, you can see that the white is winning the pawn in the exchange. Back to this king f8. In the actual game, the white play king to h4. And after this move, queen to e7 was played. And now the rook to c1. This will have the idea of moving the rook to c1 and to c2 and back to e1 and attack the queen so you have a very long way for the rook to move to attack and gain control of the e file after this move king to e8 was split and now the black cannot hold the game after this then the rook to c2 and continue to go to e2 and attack the queen and win the pieces then the king goes to d7 and with this now the rook goes to e2 continue to attack the queen and in this position the white has an advantage, advantage and the queen goes to f8 was played so after this move here come another way of sacrifice in this game and i'll give you a couple of seconds to find what is the beautiful move that the white can play in this position well congratulations for those who found this beautiful move and the beautiful move will be another knight sacrifice by playing knight to e6 and attack the queen and this give a sacrifice and if you use the pawn to capture then the pawn will just capture and check the king and you can see the queens control the square so after this move if the king move to e8 and here the white will be winning the game in three moves such as a bishop attack the pawn at g6 and check the king and here you can see nothing that the white and the king can block and move away the only way is to block with the queen after block with the queen then you have bishop capture and continue check the king then the queens control the square and also the pawn and this leaves the king to f8 and after this move you have the queen to d8 a check
So after the this check, the king cannot go to e8, and the only way is to move the king to c7. And after this move, the pawn will keep on marching towards to promote as a queen. Then, if the queen try to stop by playing queen e8, and now you have brilliant sacrifice. Bishop takes the pawn at g6 and attack the queen. And if the queen move away, then the pawn will be going to promote uh, with another queen. So bishop capture, and now. If you just go to queen e6 and check the king, then the pawn just block and the pawn move forward is unstoppable and you'll be winning for the white. So after this move in the actual game, bishop capture the pawn was played instead, and now the pawn just capture it back, and after this. The knight continue to move to e6 and attack the queen. Then the queen goes to h1 to go for a queen exchange. And instead of queen exchange, now the knight capture the pawn and go for another brilliant knight sacrifice. And with this sacrifice, the pawn cannot capture. If you capture the knight, you will have a queen to e7, and this will be a nice check in from the white. So after the knight check, the king just move to c7, and after this move, the queen to e7 check. And the black resigned again at the move 30. So if you want to continue the game, even though the black have extra one piece, but the checkmate cannot be avoided because after this move, if you move the king to e6, then the queen will just capture the pawn and continue check. And now if the king move to a7, then you can just bring your rook to e7, pinning the king, and also the queen can just capture the pawn and check the king. For example, if you just move any move after this rook to e7, such as we move a bishop to f6 to attack the rook. Then you can see here you have a very nice checkmate idea by playing queen takes the pawn and check the king and the pawn cannot capture the queen because it's being pinned by the rook and after king move to b8 then the rook can just capture and continue check and after bishop capture you have the queen capture and the king is checked so after the rook to e7 and if you continue to play you can just block with the bishop then the rook will just continue to capture so this only will just delay the mid and the white will be obviously winning the game in the next nine move and nothing much the black can do at this position if you just want to capture the pawn to delay the checkmate the king will just capture and the rook attack then the king can go to g3 and bishop continue to attack then the queen can just capture and here if you try to use the rook to block and defense the b7 pawn the queen can just continue to go to c7 and here nothing much again the black can do and if the king just move to a8 then the rook can go to d7 to go for uh, exchange and if you don't want to go for exchange you just move the king up then the rook can just capture and you're going to be the next move you'll be a um, checkmate
or any move such as g5 the bish, the queen will just capture the pawn and it will be a checkmate so therefore after the move queen takes the after the queen goes to e7 and check the king and in this position the white is having a very strong attack and going to win the game and if assume that you move the king to b6 the queen can just capture and if you try to move the king up to a5 then now you have the knight continue to check at this position and you can see the knight is check the king on his control the square and also the queen is control the square this leave the king only one place to move that is king to a4 and here after this move the queen can continue to play king to b6 and after this move any of the move it will be checkmate by queen to a5 and checkmate the king so after this move any move from the back will just delay the mate and obviously the white is winning the game and with this thank you